Well, hello there and welcome to another edition of Warbird Wednesday. My name is Fred Bell. I am the Vice Chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. And today I am with my Ignavy assistant, Greg Kenny, and we are going to go, we're actually, Greg, we're gonna telegraph this one. We've gotten so many questions about this tiny little airplane that you were able to find, which is the Top Gun version of the Dark Star. So we're gonna, we're gonna get to Dark Star, but in order to get there, there's a lot of stuff in the Top Gun film about the plane that Tom Cruise is flying, the Skunk Works airplane. There's all kinds of stuff wrapped up in there. In that film, there's probably about three airplanes wrapped up into this little tiny package. So we're gonna talk about that. The first one we're gonna start with is the X-43A, the Hyper X. The Hyper X was the beginning of the restart with very high speed manned flight. What we're talking about now is hypersonic. There's been a lot of uh, uh, press about hypersonic aircraft. The reality on hypersonic planes is that they go all the way back to the X-15, which Greg can throw something up on that. Uh, and they go way back into the 1960s. In fact, I remember when I was a kid, if you ever watched that show, The Outer Limits, there was an X-15 in there, an episode, and it was really cool. I always wanted that airplane. I built that as a rocket when I was a kid. It was a cool airplane, but we kind of moved away from high-speed flight, and we went to really maneuverable airplanes, like an F-16 or an F-15, and we went away from that because there are certain issues with uh, high-speed flight that just don't work for maneuverability, and we were really beyond the ability of computers, flight control computers and things like that to manage aircraft at that speed. All that's changed now, and so we can get in and talk about it. Top Gun has reignited that, because people are very excited about this Dark Star, what they're calling the SR-72. But before we go down the reignited hypersonic lane, I am going to this today is actually, this is just like a fishing cap, although Greg, obviously we're out in the Area 51 land, so Greg, if you really can't see the artwork on this, it's all aliens and flying saucers, something Greg loves very much. So there we have it, I toss that off. Again, to my Navy assistant, we're gonna go ahead and get this off of the deck, as they should say. Now, first of all, you could see, and I'll throw up a plan view, Greg can throw up a plan view on this. This looks nothing like what Tom Cruise is flying. It is not, it, this is what's called the lifting body design. Greg can throw up the principal lifting body design, but this is a complete lifting body design. Engines are underneath. Now, the interesting thing about the engines on this uh, aircraft or this this experimental aircraft is that these engines are scramjets. We're going to talk about that as well, though I'm not going to go too deep into it. I'm going to challenge Greg to throw up some really spiffy do graphics uh, that that show you how a scramjet works. Now, <clears throat> the other thing about this is this aircraft is not the real aircraft. Not very big. It's 3.7 meters long, so it's not very uh, very long, so you really couldn't put a man in it. You'll have to put a little tiny man in it. Um, it again, it said it was a lifting body design. It only weighed 3,000 pounds. Now, the interesting thing, Greg, is what do you think it was fueled by? Hydrogen. It was hydrogen fueled, so that's another interesting interesting thing here. The, the thing about this is, now this is when we get into Top Gun. The aircraft, this aircraft, had a top speed, which is the top speed that I know of. And if you know of something else that's gone faster than this, air, than this airplane, this test airplane, you hit me in the comments. But this aircraft flew at 9.6 Mach. So a little bit of a spoiler there, a top, Tom Cruise pushing it to 10 Mach. Uh, uh, this aircraft flew at 9.6 Mach. Um, it, this was, the X-43A was a one and done 
uh, lifting body. In other words, they used it one time and then it was lost in 2001. Now, how did it get up there? This is where we differ again. In the film, we have essentially an airplane that flies like an airplane. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And it flies up and then Tom engages the scramjet. That's what he does in the film. Spoiler alert, although I don't know that I'm giving too much away. So, but in this particular uh, testing aircraft, this was launched by a B-52. And it was, uh, it was launched by a B-52. Remember I talked about X-15, very similar in X-15. And it would have, it would basically be stacked on a rocket. It would be launched from the rocket and then the rocket would get it up to, Greg is learning today, Mach 4.3. Now, why is Mach 4.3 uh, important, Greg? Mach 4.3 is important because that is the speed that a scramjet operates at. So there you have it. So now think about that for a second in that Tom's up there with, with essentially jet engines getting up to Mach 4.3, yeah, maybe, uh, and, then, uh, and then he engages this alternate drive into the, in this aircraft and away we go. But uh, in, in reality, this aircraft to get to 9.6 Mach needed to be on the tip of a rocket and it was wing launched. So, but, and it is a truly, true testing body. It could not do a lot of maneuverability and, and things of that nature. Um, it was really trying to understand the dynamics. Remember, when you get up that hot, and this is something in the film, in, uh, in the, the Top Gun 2, you start to see the aircraft superheat. We're gonna talk about that. Heating on these aircraft uh, at those speeds, at those super high speeds. The Mach 9.6 is uh, 7,365 miles per hour. So if you're, give or take, if you think about the speeds and the, the heat on that, ultimately what uh, appears to cost him the airplane, again, spoiler alert in, in the film, is the airplane gets too hot and, and breaks up. Uh, but uh, the reality, now that is very true. Anything going that fast uh, has to do, uh, has to deal with a thermal dynamics issue. Uh, there were two other uh, aircraft that were built along this um, X-43 lifting body model and they uh, successfully flew in 2004. And so they, the, now this, as I said, this was basically a high-speed demonstrator. It was built by Boeing, Microcraft Inc., Orbital Science Corp., and GASL built it. GASL, as I understand it, also built the scramjet engine that, that went along with it. So what I want to do now is I want to move over to my tribute. And my tribute today is I'm going to go back to what I was talking about. And that is, I want to give tribute to those X-15 pilots and all those early high-speed guys that were really pushing the outside of the envelope in the X-15. The X-15 did a lot of experimental work that went later into the space shuttle and into American rocketry and rocket programs. That was really where uh, where it shined. It also helped us with a lot of thermal dynamics and, and metal um, uh, metal analysis, in other words, what we could build the shapes out of. But those guys, every time they strapped on one of those airplanes, uh, and they really weren't airplanes, they're more rockets, they didn't know they were coming back. And remember, this is in the 60s. In some cases, they did get killed. We have a test pilot in our cadre here, Bob Lilac, that flew the NF-104, which was a rocket-assisted F-104 Starfighter, which also participated in some of those um, high-altitude, low-orbit uh, test flights. But those guys, they never knew if they were coming back one day to another. So today, and I want to draw an analogy, Greg, because 
I feel a kinship with them because with these sodas that you give me, I never know whether I'm coming back or not. And the last three have been so rancid that uh, it actually took me a week to recover from the last one. We'll let people think that. This is a dry, mechanical, bubbly, a naturally flavored sparkling beverage with other natural flavors. It is very brief on the front cover. Uh, very interesting, like back label, 60 calories. So you're, you're now you're looking out for me. Okay, uh, no sodium, no uh, six carbs, 32%. There is sugar in this, which is interesting. I'm wondering how they got the calories so low. We're gonna go ahead, it's cold, so an attribute there. And it looks like, eh, it, it didn't have a lot of carbonation in it. I'm not sure on this one, Greg. This makes me nervous that you like bottle rubbing alcohol. <laughs> oh, you strike it. Oh. Look at how many faces you can get out of me. That, I'm actually, my eyes are watering on this one. That is awful who drink, who would drink this i don't know after the camera goes off we have to figure out oh non-gmo by the way so it, it's organic uh it certainly tastes organic mandatory second oh man ma mandatory second sip mm. oh Whew, that's like, you just should give me a shot of whiskey after that, just clear the palate. So moving back from this uh, really questionable beverage that Greg just gave me, uh, the HyperX was essentially just that. It was a test bed designed really just to test high speed thermal, thermal dynamics. They wanted to get a little bit of flight control uh, out of it, but but mostly it was to see how the airplane uh, or the lifting body would behave uh, with these with this high speed buffeting and again propulsion as well. Now I promised you, Greg, I would tell you how they dealt with the heating on this. They piped. They had water uh, channels all the way around the leading edges and in areas where they felt the aircraft would get a high a heat and they pumped water in there and they used water uh, basically water cooled those areas to, to cool them down in the film the aircraft that he's flying actually you could see actually starts to burn up in the case of the X-15 which what I've talked about that's true some of the high-speed flights of the X-15 they literally almost burned up the the airplane they, it got that hot and they burned off most of the control surfaces. So once they were done with the X-43, they moved on to the X-51, the Wave Rider, which we, I don't think we're going to go down that path, but we are going to do three more airplanes that are going to get you to the airplane that Tom Cruise conceptually was flying there. We don't normally do that in this program, but we're going to telegraph where we're going, but we're going to go through a series of airplanes that will roll up into what, what Tom was flying. Uh, but this was a giant step in, uh, in that direction, in, in that hypersonic direction. And a lot of the issues that have been made now with hypersonic missile, missiles and all of that go right back to this uh, bad boy right here. Now, if you, if you feel the need for speed, do I have a deal for you? In our gift shop, we have this handy dandy woven from the most amazing fabric on the planet. Maybe Tom Cruise's fabric. I, can we get in trouble with that? Probably get in trouble with that. No, it's not Tom Cruise's fabric. But we have a great uh, Top Gun shirt for you. It's got Fighter Town USA. If any of you remember, San Diego was Fighter Town. It's now moved away from there. But you can get this shirt, go out to our gift shop. It's got the, this is, there's animation here, Greg. You can see it, I'm actually animating it. It has the Top Gun logo on the front, and you need one of these. So go out to our website and grab one of those. If you came across us on YouTube and you like long form, down in the weeds, kind of wacky airplane videos that we do, we only we do these in one take. I'm not going to say 
that we spend a ton of production time on these, but we, all we do is we talk about warbirds and, and all the interesting th stuff about aviation. So if you like that, give us a subscription, give us a comment. We love your comments. If you came across us on Facebook, like us, give us a comment. And down on our page, there's a donation link. We can't do all this stuff without your donations. Give us a donation. And we now have all of our educator material on all of our platforms. So if you're homeschooling or you're teaching or you have a class or you want to come to the museum, you can do all that kind of stuff if you're close enough. You can print off those guides and see whether or not they work for you. We encourage you to do that. They actually cover some of the series here of a good old HyperX of the X43. My name is Fred Bell. I am the vice chairman of the Palm Springs Air Museum. Have a great day. Say, I love Warbird Wednesday. <laughs> I love Warbird Wednesday. All right, Dexter, you're hired, okay? <laughs>